It was a gradual thing. The hardest thing to, to put your finger on is just a general sense of unwellness. Laura Christenberry can't remember exactly when her health began to fail her, when the edges of her life, once bright with possibilities, began to darken. Really subtle and gradual. I had to have my ring resized probably eight years ago. And then when it outgrew it the second time, I just put it away. Just put it away for because it was so uncomfortable. And so I your hands are bigger? Or you're bigger, fleshier. Her shoes went up two and a half sizes. My lips have gotten bigger, my nose. This is all just kind of, I guess, fleshed out a little bit. And then the, the, the furrow and the creases have been gradual. I just thought I wasn't really aging very well. <laughs> but oh well, you know, there's more important things. Laura's husband, right. Joe. But even when I look back at photos of Laura, um, Everybody else sees these changes that I still don't even see. I see some minor things, but I guess it's been such a gradual process for me that I still, even the photos, I still see her. I just see Laura. But then she got high blood pressure. Laura's blood pressure had always been very low. And then arthritis. She developed sleep apnea, headaches, her creativity seemed to vanish. She withdrew from life a bit, a decade into these seemingly disconnected issues. A random encounter changed her life. My dad was having some surgery. Uh, his ENT came out to speak with me afterward and just to tell me how he was doing. And he kept looking at my hands and my face. And he finally just said, are you seeing an endocrinologist? And I said, no. And he said, well, you might want to get your growth hormone checked because People with a growth hormone problem have a certain look, and you have that look. So I said, okay, and he said, and your dad's okay, and da da da, you know, see you in a few minutes. And so I went back to my seat in the waiting room, and I Googled um, uh, large hands or enlarged hands growth hormone, and there it was, acromegaly. And I pulled up a result, and it was like, uh, you know, high blood pressure, check, arthritis, check, sweating, check, you know, these changes in larger hands and feet, check. Acromegaly is a condition, a medical condition, that's caused by um, too much growth hormone. Growth hormone plays an important role in bone density and healthy muscle, in how our bodies collect fat and in our cholesterol levels. It's also needed for normal brain function. We see the brain. Emory neurosurgeon Dr. Nelson Oyusiku is globally renowned as a pituitary surgeon and acromegaly expert. She had a tumor um, in a gland called the pituitary gland that sits at the base of the brain. And the, the pituitary is the orchestra conductor, if you will, of all the other endocrine organs. So it sets the tone, the pace uh, for production of hormones from other organs. Like an orchestra, um, things need to be har harmonious, right? And they need to be, there should be no dissonance, nobody going off kilter on their own. And so the pituitary acts as the conductor for the, for the endocrine system and keeps everything on an even keel. Not too much, not too little, just enough, at the right time, not too late, not too early. Laura's tumor on the pituitary gland was less than two centimeters and was autonomous, meaning it was pumping out growth hormone relentlessly, altering her appearance and seriously damaging her health. Your face changes. You become prognathic. That means your jaw begins to protrude. Your forehead becomes more prominent your malar eminences become more prominent. The soft tissue uh, becomes more dense and, and, and so forth. Your hands, the digits, um, become um, thicker. Inside of you, things are changing as well. So the things that you see on the outside are the one thing, but inside of you, things change. Oyusiku says some people develop a dangerous heart condition. Laura didn't. Your internal organs get enlarged. Your pancreas makes more insulin than it should. It's a very profound illness, um, um, and um, it really has a wide footprint uh, across the body. The fact Laura was not diagnosed for so long 
is sadly typical in a condition that affects 50 to 70 out of every 1 million people. Most patients that we see and other practitioners see um, have been misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed uh, uh, for at least a, a eight year period, at least eight years. So Laura would be consistent with that. She's a decade into it. Nobody quite knows what's going on. It was not good news to find out that I had a tumor growing inside me that we're gonna have to get out and deal with, but it was so affirming at the same time. It was like, I'm not losing my mind. I, there's a reason I don't feel like myself. I'm hoping that this is gonna mean I get my old self back. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Yeah. All ready set, to do it. ready to go. And then when I wake up, this thing will be out of me. That's right, yeah. that's the plan. Surgery will hopefully restore Laura's health. And the operative field is through the nose, so it's not a big field, as you might expect. We use an instrument called an endoscope. So it's like a little tiny rod lens, and it's designed to go through the nasal aperture. And it is capturing the image, providing illumination light and high-intensity light into the field because we're operating deep inside the nose. So it's about nine centimeters, it's dark, like a cave. You can't see without the light. So the ENT surgeon, uh, ear, nose, and throat surgeon, we work in combination, gets us through the nose into an air chamber behind the nose called the sphenoid sinus. And in that chamber uh, is the last entry, gateway, if you will, to the base of the brain, which is bone, of course. So we have to drill the bone at a very high speed using a diamond drill. And you have to be extraordinarily careful because on either side of the pituitary lie the arteries that supply the brain with blood, called the carotid arteries. They're operating in a very small area with little room for error. We've opened the, the nasal cavity and at the back of the nasal cavity, there's a wall of bone and mucous tissue that has to be removed. And that's been removed and we're looking at the base of the skull. The tumor is slightly bigger than the pituitary gland. It just pumps out growth hormone all day long. It's like a little growth hormone factory. There's the mass, there's the tumor. This whitish mass right here. See how white it looks? But well, this white is the tumor right there, right here. After more than a decade, Dr. Oyesiku bit by bit, removes the tumor. So everything went very well, so nothing to worry about. He Just... takes Joe into a room to draw out for him what he did and explain a unique feature of this tumor. And the inner lining of the cyst was lined with the tumor. So it was a little bit of a challenge to get between this membrane here and the tumor membrane but we did find it. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. well. In three months, Laura returns with significant improvements to report. High blood pressure, that's down. Um, a lot of headaches, and I'm not getting any headaches, so that's great. Um, the joint pain I still have to deal with, because some of this isn't, doesn't just magically go away. <clears throat> you know, the damage is done. It, that stuff was coursing through me for who knows how long you know, eight, 10 years before we even realized it. Sleeping? Yes. Sleeping. So, oh, I'm not snoring. I am too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can wear my ring again. I, yeah. I wasn't able to wear it for years. Where bone has grown in her forehead and feet and hands, that cannot be reversed. But Oyusiko tells her she will continue to notice physical improvement as the tissue recedes over the next few years. Most importantly, at 54 years old, Laura has had a life-changing reset to her health. I, I think for me, this is one of the more gratifying uh, aspects of my job. 